Hello, I'm Dr Jane McCartney. I'm a psychologist in the UK and for years I've been fascinated by the field of criminal behaviour. And in these psychology of crime videos, I wanted to look behind the headlines a little bit, see what was going on for the criminal, for the person that perpetrated the crime to find out exactly why they did it or to give some kind of psychological insight as to why they did it. In this episode, I wanted to look at Ted Bundy, the notorious serial killer of the US in the 70s stroke 80s. And he's almost become this kind of perverse celebrity serial killer. And that's not little to do with the fact that he was seemingly quite charming. He was seemingly, he was blessed with fairly good looks. He could learn, and I think this is an important point, he could learn to empathise with people. And the reason I say learn is because that's all going to be part of his psychological makeup, which I'll, I'll come to in a little bit more detail later. So before I get into the video, if I could ask you to like and subscribe, please, because it just helps the channel enormously. So thanks for that. So Ted Bundy, he was, I believe, convicted for the murder of dozens of women. But then I think he's also attributed to dozens and dozens more in the US in the 70s, throughout the 70s. He was incarcerated, from what I can gather, he managed to escape a couple of times and on one of these um, escape missions he managed to, to kill some more women. He was just seemingly this killing machine whose MO would be to bludgeon women or, you know, if he just kind of entered their dormitories because he had a particular like for female students from what I can read and research and he would enter the dormitories he would bludgeon them to, to near death he would sexually abuse them and then he would kill them and then he would go off and bury them in the wilderness or he would meet people through his his work or socially and and he would put on this you know, I, you know, I've, I've hurt my arm. I, I've, I've got my arm in a sling, or I'm injured in some way, just to get that woman to my kind of feel that she was potentially not as in a threatening situation as she could have been, because he was vulnerable. He'd got a broken arm. He's got his arm in a sling, or he's hurt his foot, so he's not going to be able to chase after her, but lure them into a sense of security, and then take advantage of that. And again kill them, abuse them and there's been talk about how he would dismember them in such a way to keep trophies. I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about trophies in sexual killings and murders a little bit later. So it's widely known all over the world these days what Bundy did. So let's go back a little bit into his past and he's obviously a killer, a murderer that's been researched hundreds of times so he was born just after the war and he was born to a unwedded mother and passed off as the the mother's sibling so the grandparents seemingly were what he thought were his his parents and the, his mother was his sister this is just after the war there are hundreds of thousands of pregnancies like that going on all over the world so this wouldn't have been unusual and it's not unheard of at all for a child of an unwedded mother to be brought up as siblings and actually the, the grandparents acting as the parents I believe Jack Nicholson was somebody who was whose sister turned out to be his mother similarly with uh, actress Merle Olbron who famously starred with Laurence Olivier in the original Wuthering Heights film again she was, she believed that her sister was her sister, but it, she turned out to be her mother. I've read reports that actually her mother was only 12 when she gave birth to Merle Elbron, so it, that would be easily passed off, but abhorrent in its own way, of course. So this isn't unusual in any way for a actual maternal figure to be passed off as a sibling because society, honour dictates otherwise shame 
you know, it is saying otherwise. And it's interesting that the home that Bundy was born into, his mother would have him as it was born. It was when he was born, it was referred to the home for unmarried mothers. But in in one of its previous incarnations, it was known for, as the home for friendless women. And the reason I find that quite interesting, because it's just an irony that one of Bundy's assets was he was friendless. He didn't know how to make friends. He would say, I don't get what it's like to, to be able to have friends, to have friendships and, and look at relationships. I don't get that. And that would have been his psychopathy. That would have been his, I can manufacture it, I can copy, uh, you know, classic absolute psychopath. I can copy what I'm meant to do and I can learn how I'm meant to interact with other people. I can say the right things. I can put on the tears if something sad is happening because that's what I'm meant to do that I've, I've learned but I don't feel it and that I think is one of the motivations one of the psychological motivators for Bundy's huge amounts of crimes because as a psychopath you don't feel any empathy any understanding what it's like to be in somebody else's shoes you wouldn't do the crimes that you did if you did if, if you felt those things but you also have limited ability to feel joy or pleasure at anything. And he would have felt a certain satisfaction, a certain joy at what he was doing. But of course, then that has to be repeated. It's very short lived and that has to be repeated. And this is where the trophies would have come in, the the parts of the, the bodies that he would have kept. And he's not unique in this, of course he's not, but the parts of the bodies that he would have kept because they would remind him fleetingly of that moment of satisfaction, of mastery, of joy that he was getting at that moment, whether it was taking the life of that person or just manipulating somebody in a position that he was then going to abuse them or try and murder them or, or whatever it, he was it does he would have just reminded him and every time he would have seen them he would have got that sense of joy and reliving but also he would have got that sense of look at me I'm so clever I'm such a clever boy but underneath that was that sense of self-loathing or lack of self-worth that would have come and developed in his formative years so that's why he had to keep killing as well because he enjoyed the game. That's why the psychopath part of him comes in. He would have absolutely enjoyed the game. So you have the sexual element, of course, but then you also have the game playing element and the getting away with it and getting away with it over and over again, which would have just emboldened him, just told him in his head that what he was doing was right and then upping the ante. So going on to kill people when he was you know, an escaped convict he would have just enjoyed the absolute thrill of the game. Life is a game to play and win, as far as Bundy was concerned. And for a large part of his life, that's exactly what he did. He did win. And he did win. And even when he spent his years trying to deny the murders or take the legislative people to court about his his death sentence, etc., etc., that, again, was all part of the game to him. That was all part of, I'm cleverer than you and I'm going to win because my past history tells me that's exactly what I've done. Obviously, it didn't work out for him and he was electrocuted in 1989. But that was the end of the road to him, which I guess he probably always knew was going to happen. So that's the, the underlying thing about Bundy, that he is a, a psychopath. And psychopaths are mercifully fairly rare and they're usually of above intelligence as well hence so he was brought up as as i've said with his mother as his sister and seemingly his maternal grandparents his grandfather was abusive again sounding very psychopathic himself he was dictatorial he was unempathetic he ruled you know the the household with an iron fist and his grandmother was subservient, was timid, seemingly had a nervous breakdown, not surprisingly. So that's what he would have seen. And he would have potentially, from that as well, and from his mother and from his grandmother, his two major, his two major maternal influences on his life, he would have seen what he thought was 
weakness. He would have seen what he thought was vulnerability. So his view of other women were that they were weak and vulnerable or certainly should be weak and vulnerable. He had a girlfriend, apparently in his very early years, that when she ditched him, of course, his his wounded ego had to be repaired. And he then set out on a campaign of terrorising her. And that's what Bundy, again, would have held with him all the time, that fear of rejection, that fear of humiliation, that fear of shame, which he found out he was born into. So you have this family secret, and quite often in these towns, the, the child themselves are the last person to know what the family secret is. So he would have had shame, he would have had humiliation, he would have had rejection of the norm, but most of all, he would have had that sense of, well, who the hell am I? Suddenly I was, you know, my, well, who I thought were my parents' child, and then I'm not. And who am I? So that sense of self, which coupled with his psychopathy, just made him the ultimate killing machine, basically, the ultimate serial killer. It's interesting because I wanted to research a little bit about his actual mother, his maternal mother, and about what her thoughts were about him. And up until the end, she just refused to believe that he could have done these things. And this isn't untypical of a parent about their child. But even when the evidence was presented, even when he was seemingly, just before he died, confessing to another however many murders she just didn't want to believe that and I wonder if there was a sense of him because of the the born into shame that he would have felt about himself whether there was a part of him that was always trying to to please his mother and I think there was that conflict as well because as I said he was kind of his his mum and his 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 grandmother were the role models of being a bit weak and vulnerable and covering up and shameful and all those things. But at the same time, there'd be that conflict because essentially you are still my mother and I want your love. I want your approval. I want your adoration. And that seemed to flip the other way as well from her, that she was probably seeking it from him as well because she'd had to keep him a secret. As far as Bundy was concerned, he was born and he was born to be a dirty little secret. And that's where his, his motivation so would have come from. So there's this huge conflict going on in him that is just channeled with his intellect and his charm and his ability and his psychopathy into becoming a serial killer. I don't, he would be interviewed lots. He loved the attention, of course. So he would be interviewed and he'd say so many different things about his crime and his background to different people he'd say lots of different things he knew he was saying different things it wasn't that he'd forgotten that he'd said one story to one person and then he was just repeating the story differently to another person or just making up another story to another person he knew he was saying differently because I think that was his air of if you like interest or mystique that he was giving over he wanted people to be talking about him which we are of course you know 31 years after his death so when he talked about when he would be interviewed, one of the things that he would talk about was um, he wanted, he, he said that he wanted to possess his victims. And I think that's a way of kind of trying to explain the trophy keeping in, in one respect. I think that's more about reliving experiences personally. But when he talks about possession, he was talking about what other people had. And, you know, his victims were a certain type. They were university women girls and if he looked at them they could potentially have everything that he didn't have they would have youth they would have a certain sense of carefree they would have support often he would attack them in their sorority houses sorority being friendship houses so that's what he wanted he wanted support he wanted interest he wanted people to know who he was and take an interest in it so i think that his um his acts were motivated by yeah taking away stuff from other people so he could have it they were motivated also by sex but I think also I think a bigger motivation which is his primary motivation was it was just a game to Bundy 
and it was a game that he was good at and it was a game that up until he died he believed that he was winning so that was ted bundy thanks ever so much for watching and if you want a little bit more detail i've got a corresponding podcast called why killers kill with dr jane it's on google apple all the usual podcast platforms so jump over to there and have a download and please don't forget to subscribe and like it helps the channel enormously as i'm sure you all know and until next time thanks for watching and goodbye <laughs>